Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we will see how actual projects are built in companies, how APIs are designed, developed and documented. So the different teams, whether it's a front end, back end or testing can collaborate together and build great products. By the end of this video, you will learn RESTful API convention, API design first approach, how to set up the mock server, low code API testing, create API documentation and generation of the code for client and the server. And the best part is you can do all this with a single platform. So if this sounds interesting, then stick around. Also, don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. Alright guys, so before we start designing our APIs, let me give you a walkthrough what API Dog is and what features it offer. So API Dog is an all-in-one development platform which helps us to design, debug, test, document, mock and build API faster and together. API Dog is a complete set of tools that connects the entire API lifecycle, helping teams to implement the best practices for API design first development. With API Dog, you can design and develop your APIs faster and together. You can do a low code API testing. You can generate the test cases for APIs and add assertions visually. With their online API documentation, you can publish beautiful documentation for your APIs. And the last is the smart mock without script. We can have a mock server that automatically generates data based on our field names and we don't have to write any script for this. Let me show you how different teams collaborate together, whether you are a backend developer developing an API or you are a frontend developer or you are a QA tester or you are an API designer who wants to work on the API documentation. API doc covers all at one place. Next, let me show you a simple comparison why different teams have started using API doc over Postman. So API doc is considered as an API design first platform, which is more suitable for the development teams to efficiently build high quality APIs. Whereas Postman is a request first platform, which is more suitable for API consumers to try and debug APIs. Here is the complete feature comparison between the API doc and the Postman. So we can see here the API design. There are a lot of features like design API visually, generate API specification, recognize different schemas. So API doc supports everything, whereas Postman doesn't support all. For the debugging part, you can generate your pre and post scripts, response validation, and you can easily connect your database with the API doc. Whereas you cannot do all this thing in Postman. For testing, you can have your CI CD pipelines, assertions, run collections, and you can also generate a test report. Whereas for the Postman, you need to pay for it. The API documentation is also very easy to generate in API doc, which is not available for the Postman. For the API mock, you can just go through all the lists and you will see that API doc is way better than using Postman, which is a simple platform to try out the APIs. So now how you can use API doc and create your project. So what you can do is either you can just launch your web app or you can just install the API doc desktop. So I have already installed my API doc desktop. Let me show you. So this is how my API doc desktops looks like. You will see that you have this kind of a dashboard here. Now what we can do is first let's go and create a simple project. So I'm going to click here and I will create my project as user CRUD management. All right. If I want an example project, I can just include it for me I don't want it so I'm not going to include it I can just click on create and you see that my project is created which is the user crud management and here on the left hand side you will see that you have the APIs you have the test where you can just generate your test cases shared docs for creation of the API documentation settings and invite so if you want to create the crud APIs for the user management what I will do is I will go to the endpoints I'm going to click here and create a new folder and I will name it as user all right the parent will be root I will click on ok and it's saved now you will see that we have a root and I have a user now I want to create a new endpoint in this so I'm just going to click on add and you will see that we have an endpoint so I will create an endpoint as user so this is going to give me a list of users and I can give here get 
list of user it will be a shared it is in the developing stage i will keep the maintainer as my name tag as user now in the description that this api will return the list of users all right now here we don't want anything to be request because it's a get api so there will be nothing in the request we're going to have the http status code and here we need to define what response we have to give back to the user so what we can do is i can go to the schema and i can create a new schema so i will have a new schema and here i can add all the fields so i'm going to have the id my id will be of type string then i'm going to have the name of the user which will also be a string next i'm going to have an email address which is also going to be a string and we have the email so this is how my schema will look like for the user so i'm going to click on save so i will just give the name as a user because this is a user schema so let's have a user here now we will also need to have a default response template because most of the companies have their response as a default template and all the responses are same so what i will do is i'm going to add here the code next i will have a message field so i will have a message which will be of type string and the third field which i want is the actual data so the data will be of type object so i'm going to have this as object and i will click save so this is going to create my default response template and if i go back to the endpoint then here you will see that it is not going to give me the default response because we just have set the default response template now any new endpoint which we are going to create which will that will contain the default response template so what i will do is i will just close this okay and here uh, i'm going to go and create a new endpoint again and this will be user and i will have the get list of user uh, i'm going to give the maintainer i will have the tag as user i will have get the list of user uh, we don't have a response and now this time you see that we have a automatically generated response now here i want to change this and i want to give it as an array and this will be array of users so i'm going to go and select the user which i have created so i have the users here all right so this is how my success response will look like now the next what i will do is i'm going to click on the add example and this is going to give me a example data and this will be a success so you see that this is a dummy data where i have my response as code message and the data which contains the exact schema which i have defined i'm going to click on the okay and i have this data now we can also generate a blank response so i can go here i can click on the blank response and this is going to give me a blank response uh, for the json data now this is our blank response what we can do is uh, we can just click on generate a json response and you can just define your own response you can also use an xml json schema or if you want your response to be defined from your database then you can just import it from the database where you can just give your click on manage connection add a new connection and here you can define your database connection strings so you can have sql postgresql and there are a lot of databases so this is also a possibility if you want to define your uh, responses directly from the database schema all right so we go here and now we have defined over this api what i will do is i will click on save and when i click on save you will see that we have this get list of users now let's create one more endpoint which will be uh, uh, i'm going to click here we have a new endpoint and get an individual user so i will have the slash user slash id and you will notice that whenever i do okay let me give this a uh, get user by id i'm going to change the values here here user and here user by id all right and here you will see that as soon as i give here an id i automatically have a id here and a string here so this is going to take the uh, parameter the path param and this is going to be our response and in this response i'm going to just have the object and i'm going to reference this object with the user so this is how it's going to look like if i click on the add example then i will click on auto generate and this is how my response is going to look like for a success case for get a user by id so i'm going to click ok and i'm going to click on save so you will see that now we have two different apis uh, i'm going to just drag this inside okay so we have two endpoints get user by id and get list of user now third we can just create a post one so let me go and change this to post uh, i'm going to have this slash user and this will be create new user i'm going to change this to the page i'm going to change this to user and create a new user all right and for this we need to give a body so i'm going to go here the body so i'm going to click on json and here what i will do is uh, i'm going to have the name which is a string then i'm going to have the email 
which is also be a string so this is how our json body will look like okay now i'm going to click on the example uh, and we can just do a generate automatically so this is how it automatically generated the values here uh, i'm going to give this as a response and whenever a user is created I'm going to keep this response same with a user. So I'm going to select a user here. All right. So we have done this and I'm going to click on add example. And this is how our response structure will look like for create user API. All right. I'm going to click on OK. Now, this is how I'm going to click on save and we see that we have our endpoints ready. So we have three endpoints are ready. Now, let's say if we want to test those endpoints. So what I will do is uh, if we want to test it, I'm going to go to a run. Uh, we have to select the environment so let's say we select this uh, local environment and if i click on the send then we see the response is generated and this user is created now what we can do is we can actually generate these values dynamically so i'm going to click here i will have insert dynamic values and i'm going to have the generate data and here i'm going to select name so maybe i have a full name so i'm going to select full name insert and now every time whenever i send a request a dynamic random value will be generated here similarly i will do it for the email as well so i'm going to go here i'm going to insert a dynamic value uh, i'm going to come here and i will look for email and i will insert so i'm going to send the request and you see that this time the name is something else if i send it again you will see that every time the record is inserted but the values are dynamically generated now if i go to the get list of users and if i go to the run and let's say i want to send the request then this is going to give me a mock response you see this is a mock response so we are ready with our api design so we have designed three apis and we have also designed the response structure and everything now the next part i want to show you is that uh, the api doc also offers the branching so you can also create a new sprint branch so that multiple people can collaborate together and they can maintain their own branches with this they also gave us an api version where you can just create the new version of your apis then it also offers to generate the code so if i click on the generate code then you can get the generate client code if i click on it let's say we want to work in a javascript uh, we want to use axios then this is the code you can just put it into your project and you can just get your api called ready into your react project but let's say if you are building on a node.js then you can generate the backend code and let's say we have a node.js in the node.js we want to have an express and here you can define more parameters as you want if i click on generate code then this is going to download a complete backend project with this implementation of the apis so that's how powerful the tool is now let's see how we can set up the mock part so let's go to the mock and now here uh, if i want to have this uh, mock server ready if i want to click on the request so you see this is a mock server and when I send a request, you see you get the data. So this is a get data by ID. Now, when I go to any of the APIs, you will see that we have two tabs. One is the design tab where we are designing this API request response. We can edit it, we can run it and we can have a mock. But there is also a debug where you can just simply send a request and you get a response back. The next part I want to show you is uh, let's go to the test. Now in the test, what I can do is uh, I can just click on add new test scenario. I can have a user test and i'm going to click on continue all right now i have this user test now i'm going to click on add and i'm going to click on import specific endpoints so i will go here and i'm going to select all the three and i'm going to click on add all right and you will see that all three are now added and now if i click on run then you will see that it is going to run all the three endpoints and check whether all the three endpoints have a failure or a success so here we see that we have all the three test cases are passed so this is how you can just test it but there is a scenario where you just want to have a regression test of your application so what you can do is i can just click here and i can select this one and I can just run a batch. So you have maybe you have 10 or hundreds of an API and you want to do a regression test. You can just select one scenario and then you can just run the batch. And this is going to execute all the endpoints and give you the report. You can export the report. You can also share the report. Now with this, it you can also have the CI CD. So let's say you want to integrate it in any of your pipeline. Maybe you want to integrate the test cases into your Jenkins. You can just click on the Jenkins and this is how you can just integrate the CI CD. You can just have your Jenkins or GitLab pipeline and you can just put this script or a stage there. So this was the test part. You have the test tab, you have the test data, you can generate the reports and integrate it with the CI CD pipeline. Now, if you want to create the documentations, you can go to the shared docs and here what I will do is I'm going to click on new 
and I will have my user CRUD management docs or user CRUD management API. All right. And I want to select the environment, but uh, I don't see the mock environment here. So what I can do is uh, I can go back. Uh, I can go to the APIs. Uh, I can go to the environments. And here I can just enable the cloud mock. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to have the smart mock. I will on and we are going to have this default mock server and we want this to be open access because we did not implement any authentication or authorization part. Okay. So now if I go back to the uh, shared docs and if I click on new, uh, we have the user API docs and let's select the environment. So I'm going to select the cloud mock. All right. And I'm going to click on save here. And this is how my API mock is generated. I'm going to click on the open. And here you will see that this is our API documentation is ready. So let's say if I go here, I want to try it out and I'm going to send it and I should be able to get the response back. So you see that we have the response back. Now anyone can use this API documentation and integrate the APIs into that project because this has all the complete details. You have the request sample. If you want to have a request sample for JavaScript, just click on it and you will get the JavaScript request sample. You can just copy it, put it in your code. You can also have the response structure, how the response is going to look like and everything. So this is how you do the API design first approach. You first design the API, you create the API documentation, and then you start the development of it using a mock server. So you also have a mock server. Let's try out with the create new user. And I have a new user, this one, I will send a request. And I see that this new, new user is created. So that's how easy it is with the API doc. Now let's say you have a scenario that uh, some of the companies uh, they are using Swagger, they want to use the Postman and all this stuff. Well, and you want to integrate everything. What you can do is you also have an import export. So I'm going to go to the setting. You can just import data and you can import from Swagger, Postman, any of the API doc that your company is using. You can also do a scheduler here. You can just add a scheduler and you can just synchronize your changes for the swagger after every three hours or every five minutes and they will get integrated here. This is a very beautiful product. Uh, I liked it and I thought that it will be a worthwhile to share the API doc with you where you can just design your APIs, develop, test it out, create your API documentation. You can find all the details uh, related to the API doc in the description of the video so that you can go and download it and check it out and use it by yourself. I hope you liked the video. A thumbs up is appreciated. You can also connect with me via Facebook or Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter for latest updates. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. Thank you. Thanks for watching.